Hey, it's Derek Richards. It's a drink with Derek, the reopening Las Vegas edition. And I could not possibly do, well, this is a series of reopening Las Vegas uh, episodes. And I couldn't possibly do this without the entertainment guru of Las Vegas, John Katzlamidis, the uh, entertainment writer for the Las Vegas Review Journal, who has been uh, on the sidelines for a while now. It's about time you got off your ass and started working again. <laughs> yeah, right. I, th I, think I think I missed two column days uh, since uh, March. I can't. So there's been a lot to write about. There's been a lot to cover, really, honestly. But um, it's good to see some stuff uh, shaken free and uh, and us trying to put to figure this out in uh, in real time. So I'm I'm ready for shows to get back and uh, and uh, see how we can do it. Well, it's going to be insane. I know that uh, I know right now it's officially uh, entertainment season is starting because uh, uh, Costco got rid of all their riot decorations. So that's over. <laughs> for those decorations, I, could, I thought that's that was over. Good. Yeah, I didn't know you could decorate for that. And uh, find out. I'm all way to tell you something. Find out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I get it. I was in one of those. I was in one of those demonstrations early on back in the in the May. I remember seeing your uh, I remember seeing your post on uh, Instagram. It was kind of you were in the midst of it, and then you had shown the aftermath when they were doing the cleanup and stuff like yeah. that. Too. So we, we it's that. nice to see that in the rearview mirror, at least for now. So hopefully that's uh, that's gone and done. And uh, Johnny Katz, who you should follow on social media, Instagram. I love your Instagram posts. <laughs> and and, well, and I say this because if somebody is gonna if you're gonna come out to Vegas, and you want to see what shows actually look like and get a feel for how the room looks, how the stage looks, how the performers are, you know, how they look on stage. Uh, you do a great job of taking just a ton of pictures and it's just great to scroll through and give people a perspective so they can see what they're going to be getting into when they decide to come back out to these shows. Yeah, I get, um, I get a lot of that. You know, people want to, you know, it's one thing to write about something and make sentences and describe it, but you know, often uh, the best way to, to, um, to depict a, a performance of any in, in art and entertainment is to show it, you know, either, you know, still photography or clips. And, uh, you know, you can go like we have absinthe coming back at the end of the month. And uh, it's one thing to describe absinthe, but it's another to see the, you know, the skaters and the gazillionaire and, and uh, you know, the body balancers and, and those acts actually do what they do visually. So it's, it's all part of this, you know, what I do. All have you have you done any body balancing during the time off here at all? I'm not personally? good at balancing generally. No, I don't do any balancing. I don't. <laughs> My friend Misha, uh, ten pack over at Absinthe, and we, he, uh, he's been doing bodybuilding in the uh, in, in the sideline. He, you know, he's half of that uh, body balancing team. It was the original um, act, an original act in Absinthe. Duo Vector, it's called, and Misha has in in the shutdown become a bodybuilding. Uh, competitor, competitive fitness bodybuilder. So while most of us have gone through the quarantine 15 and tried to, you know, keep, keep the weight off, this guy's been winning trophies as a bodybuilder and he's ready to come back on stage now too. So that's you insane. Know. You know, nothing worse than someone being productive during a quarantine, you know? Yeah. What is this? He's making us look bad. I know. No kidding. Well, you've got your uh, Ouija board, your crystal ball and your tea leaves in front of you. All true. Uh, so which shows are opening that uh, immediately that you know of for sure well uh by the end of i'll say by the first week through the first week of november we'll, we'll call it that we've got seven shows at mgm resorts international which are david copperfield brad garrett carrot top fantasy uh jabberwockies thunder from down under and australian bg show they're all opening on the sixth Okay. That's, that's those are and, and um, a few of them are in newer venues. We've gone, you know, I've written about this. Uh, Jabberwockies to to be socially distanced at two fifty are moving from their own showroom off the casino floor at MGM Grand over to the Grand Garden Arena, so they can be they can uh, create a facility there. So they're going from a, a venue that seats maybe five hundred to one that seats almost uh, can seat almost seventeen thousand. So they've got plenty wow. of room. Uh, Brad Garrett is moving into, I don't know if I mentioned him, Brad's moving into the comedy club, moving upstairs at the MGM Grand. He's in the underground. Now he's moving up to the what they call Studio A and B ballrooms. And if you're walking into the uh, Grand Garden Arena, there the, the facilities on the left, on the immediate left as you're going into that main entrance. Uh, usually it's the boxing 
uh, media center and a lot of territory there. So they're going to make a room for him for 250 for his comedy show for the foreseeable future. Carrot Top and Lux at, and uh, Fantasy at the Lux are moving from Atrium Showroom over to the Luxor Theater, which is where uh, Run was the Cirque show most recently and where Chris Angel's show was for 10 years. It's also the original home of the Blue Man Group. So they've got um, a lot of space there to do their socially distanced design and put their new versions of their shows up. And uh, Thunder and Bee Gees are going to be in the uh, Thunderland uh, showroom for the, where their original homes are at the Excalibur for the time being. So that's MGM Resorts. Tape Face is coming back. Uh, I think on, I'd have to check to be sure of his date. I think November 11th uh, over at Harris. He'll be in Harris showroom. Piff the Magic Dragon is November uh, 28th. Uh, no, he's on November oh, 29th. October. He's October 29th, isn't he? October, October, I'm sorry, October 29th, too many days. Yeah. October 29th in the uh, Flamingo showroom for Piff. He's on my podcast, on podcasts now on my podcast. We did a video and audio with him over there. Uh, he op he reopens there. Uh, the uh, X Country Adult Review is coming back to the Harris Cabaret Thursday night, tomorrow night, or it will have been Thursday night when, by the time mm -hmm. it's open. It's the first season's entertainment show to reopen. Uh, Absence, as I mentioned, is uh, October 28th at the Spiegel Tent at Caesars Palace on Roman Plaza. That's the, that's, uh, the first big production show that we're going to have come back on online. And that's and, still that's still their same their same venue. They have not moved. Yeah, that's right. stay there. They've redesigned that to to um it was originally about 660 seats. They've drawn it down to about 153 with cabaret tables and they've moved from the round the room in the round right and, and moved the stage back to the the deck where um it's the auxiliary performance deck like the piano deck they've called it. So you're right. from the audience. So the, the tent it's the same facility but it's not being played in the round to get these you know uh, directives uh, to meet these directives. So, and then the Laugh Factory just reported this uh, and posted this yesterday is coming back at the Tropicana, uh, and that is November fifth uh, with Bob Zaney heading up a, a lineup there. And then we're going to have uh, down the line uh, uh, Andrew Dice Clay, Rich Little uh, is going to return his residency to Murray Sawchuck's Magic Show is coming back at four p.m. and Dice Clay over Thanksgiving weekend is going to be uh, headlining the room. Uh, so they're going to relaunch that. And that room, Laugh Factory at the Tropicana is going to carry the entertainment for the Tropicana for the rest of this year. They're not going to reopen the theater. It doesn't look like until uh, uh, it doesn't look like until 2021. So, so that, Laugh Factory will still be in the same venue. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they've redesigned that room to, to accommodate between, uh, I think uh, Harry said 50 to 90 audience members with the, with the redesign. And this is all because of the, uh, uh, safety enforced uh, directives, uh, state enforced safety directives, and that adds on to some of the others we've already uh, announced. I've already been to the LA Comedy Club, the Stratosphere is back. Uh, shows at Mosaic Theater on the Strip, which is right across from Park MGM and just north of Showcase in that mall. It used to be the Empire Ballroom and, and Tommy Wynn Theater. They've yes. got uh, Ozzy Heat, the Mail Review. Uh, they've got um, the uh, Queens of Rock tribute show and uh, the Piano Man, which is an Elton John and uh, Billy Joel tribute is also in that room and they're running those Thursdays through Saturdays. And that's been since uh, for about two weeks now. So those that's your entertainment scene right now, sir. That's uh, everything I can do. And then you've got Notoriety has been going with the, with their uh, music lineup and they're going to be doing some more things down at Neonopolis, Ken Henderson's venue. They're talking about, um, they've got Red Penny Arcade, a, a great four piece band headed by Ann Martinez on Fridays. They're talking about putting a, a drag production, a weekly drag production in another venue upstairs opposite that. And, uh, and Vinay and Jimmy Denning uh, from Bronx Wanderers and uh, Tenors of Rock respectively are putting together a music show to, to play that venue too. So things are, are bubbling up. Yeah. Well, I can just, uh, I can imagine all the dancers coming back from all the burlesque shows and the male review shows, and they all put on like the COVID thirty, so they all look like they're working, <laughs> like they're working in the back room at Dollar General, and now all of a sudden they're gonna start cutting weight like a boxer trying to drop thirty pounds before his title yeah. fight. <laughs> they're all in the silver outfits in the sauna. Yeah, I uh, I was talking to a, a, a 
a member of one of the shows uh, recently, just the last week, and they were saying, yeah, I haven't seen the rest of the cast lately. I wonder how we're doing, because everybody's, you know, <laughs> I'm like, wonder if they're going to get discounts until he's done the back of the It went from a six-pack six to a one-pack. Yeah, to a six-pack to a pony keg in some cases. Um, but I'm, I'll find out. I'll tell you that. I'm going to beat all these. I'm going to go and, and scout it out. But that is, a, that is a, a, a really valid concern, you know. Now, what's the uh, story with restaurants and the casinos? Because obviously people come to Vegas, they want to see shows and they're going to gamble. But I mean, you have a ton of people that love the foodie restaurants, the Gordon Ramsay's, the, uh, yeah. the Emerald restaurants and that. Are mm -hmm. all those open back up to, not at full capacity, obviously, but are they all operating? Most are back uh, at 50% and uh, some are running at um, restricted schedules. But most of the big name uh, hotel casino restaurants, and you mentioned Gordon Ramsay's back, the... Uh, um, Hell's Kitchen at Caesars, and 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 the and the, uh, the burger Gr Burger over at Planet Hollywood are, are back open, and the one of Paris that he has uh, are back open. Uh, I, you know, most of them, the big name ones are back. I ate at Rails uh, the other night; they're back on weekends at least. Uh, the the Great Italian Restaurant at Caesars Palace. Um, you know, they they are coming back, and and restaurants are very important. You know, they they've been. I think a lot of the the protocols were written with restaurants in mind because there's such a high volume of them, and we were so known for that. And I think that was the first thing that they wanted to get back. So people, you know, it's hard. You, you, the two things you need when you reopen a, a hotel casino is the casino in some form and, and places to eat, and uh, so that was the that is happening. Yes. Now, what is is there any word on Allegiant Stadium? Uh, you know, it's going to be uh, probably first or second quarter next year. I know Garth Brooks' Brooks show is booked there February um, okay. 16th, I think, at, at uh, Allegiant, which would be the first uh, big show. His original show in July was supposed to be the, big, the first big show. and uh, Or in August, I'm sorry, August 22nd was his. And uh, that's the date. Now, I'm hoping, I think realistically about Allegiant, is um, that we the target would be to have some show, maybe a Brooks show or some event leading into uh, the Raiders' second season in Las Vegas, and I okay. think that's a realistic way. It's 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 hard to say. The bigger and you know the bigger the facility, the the more requirements are going to be. But I uh, I I think that, and I think the same of T-Mobile Arena. You know, I don't think we're going to we're certainly not going to see any arena or stadium shows this this year in the next couple of months, but. I think first quarter next year is going to, we're going to get a verdict on what we're doing now. We're going to get a lot of answers in the first week of November, by the way. But, um, yes. we're gonna, <laughs> November 6th, as, as George Klyovkov over at uh, MGM Resort says, is going to answer that. It's going to beginning could be the beginning of answering a lot of questions. If we can manage that uh, period with these shows opening, then it, that's proof that you can move uh, and be a little bit more uh, uh, inventive and aggressive about uh, bigger facilities opening. Well, that's what I was going to ask in terms of like the Coliseum at Caesars or Park MGM Theater. Uh, are they waiting until November 6th to see what happens and yeah. then they'll go ahead and make a decision at that point as to when those venues will start to open? Yeah, they and I think that they want those to be um, running full capacity. You know, the Coliseum is a good example of this conversation. They've, they've uh, booked Usher. They announced Usher as a uh, headliner uh, next year. Next, uh, I think, I believe his dates are April. Mm -hmm. And... And the, the the template is for a full theater experience. They're not; it's not a restricted show. It's the full four thousand capacity, and I think the other venues are going to follow suit. They're going to want to go full full production or not at all. Usher has said he wants the show to be full, and I can tell you, knowing the folks like Lady Gaga and uh, Gwen Stefani's and, and Shania Twain's who are, you know, those are over at Zappos Theater and the ones that are coming back over at Morrissey's, another one who's been rebooked at the Coliseum. They want to, they don't want to play to a sparsely attended distant crowd. They want to come back re for real and their real shows are, are waited out. So hey, I don't want to brag, but I've been playing to sparsely attended crowds for a long time. <laughs> I've got that dialed in. It's a little sparsely on the side, you say, huh? <laughs> are there any shows from what you've heard that are simply not coming back? 
You know, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Not Nobody has formally announced that they're not coming back of the major shows yet. I, I know that it's going to be a, a challenge to reassemble a lot of these shows. But um, there, I would look at... Uh, my feeling is that, that maybe some Cirque shows are going to take a lot longer to return, if at all, when this reopens. Uh, shows like Wow at the Rio um, and even Extravaganza, those two shows over at... Uh, the Rio and, uh, and Bally's, um, they're going to be tough. The shows that are in hotels that are going to take a while to return, uh, rating the rock ball, if I'm looking at them, I'm, I'm hoping they can find a suitable return. They were at the club at, uh, at the Rio. Um, but I can tell you that everybody has told me they want to come back. They're ready to come back, but I don't know how it, it, it takes a line by, it's a line item thing. Line by line, are you coming back? Is your show going to be able to come back? I'm talking about all the shows at Saks Theater. I'm talking about all the shows at Windows, at, at Bally's. I'll, I mentioned all the Cirque shows. Um, but I, I do, you know, like David, uh, you know, David Sachs wants to return all of his shows. Adam Steck of Spy Entertainment has all of his. He's got Shin Lim also and Voice Men as long, along with the ones at Excalibur. He says they want to come back. And uh, we'll see. It's a market question. You know, will the, will the market bear these shows? You know, and, and uh, you know, uh, Spiegel World's working on bringing back Opium and uh, or Atomic Saloon show first, and then Opium. And uh, I'm uh, I'm just following. That's all I can tell you. I, I'm following it, and we're, that's a big question for us. No, exactly. Well, now at the Rio, is the Comedy Cellar coming back along in the, along the lines of these other comedy clubs, I, such as the Laugh Factory, Brad Garrett's, and Beholden to the Rio opening, they they have to. They're in a partnership with the Rio. I do th I do believe that some of the comics that have played there traditionally are going to be able to work. And Kimmel Club too is another one I'm looking at that hasn't announced yet. Are have been freed to you know go ahead and work elsewhere. So it's going to be a long horizon for comedy. I like the comedy so I like that layout and I like those guys. I like Noam and, and that team a lot. And I actually visited them in New York. Um, I think the last time I was there. Um, the more comedy, the better, I say. Uh, you, know? you know, you couldn't be talking to a more uh, receptive person <laughs> that, uh, no. that statement. What right. is that the, uh, has the, because now when people come back and they see pictures in terms of 25 feet seems to be the rule right now from the front of the stage to the first audience member. Right. Now, has that been explained to you from a logic or science perspective from anybody in a position of authority? Because- well, I, I don't know if you can like like spit COVID in your hand and throw it and it goes 24 feet and they find out that's where it dies. <laughs> I mean, I was literally spitting a watermelon seed in my backyard and the best I got, John, was literally 21 feet, six inches. That sounds Which like Gallagher, Um I, uh, I will tell you this, that the, the set aside the 25 foot rule you could make a, a sensible scientific argument that you just want to make make sure you're safe and and go it's been called a very cautious or very conservative is what what uh george uh george k uh, kleofkoff and i talked about the other day when we were talking about all the mgm shows they were dealing with this it has not been explained to me how uh 25 foot distance is um is going to be applied to a sh comedy show or a show like Carrot Top, for example, right. um, where you have um, a closer distance in a, in a live entertainment ambient experience at Mayfair or Rose Rabbit Live, where you're a lot closer to the stage. You're six feet away there. It's the same type of, I think, scientific uh, review that you have to enact. And it should be the same type of health safety protocols for all of it, regardless of right. whether you have a ticket to it or you just came in to, to have the fettuccine. Um, so that, that has not been explained to me, but it is a universal concern. And it's a very important uh, provision because it has really thrown a knuckleball at a lot of these shows who are, who are planning their return based on the, the same uh, template as were the restaurants or bars that had been able to serve food and were providing entertainment. Sure, uh, not, and, and a place like Notoriety has been able to uh, to operate uh, with the restaurant directives, right? Because they serve have served food and and are using ambient entertainment rather than a ticketed show. So ticketed shows have been um, forced to deal with this twenty five foot thing. Um, I don't know 
what the exact specific reasoning is comparatively. Compared, right. you know, I can say that you could make this sensible argument like, look, just to be safe, we're going to have everybody be 25 feet away. It's better to be safe on this thing and get back running and then draw it back in than not. But nobody has explained why we have that 25 feet over here in, in, a, in the fantasy show who are dancing, where we right. also have dancers and aerialists and rogues rabbit life who are dancing six feet from your, your dinner. Uh -huh. that, that, has, that, has, that I, I don't see what, I don't know why that is. And I think it is going to be Derek dealt with. I, I think it is being even now dealt with, to be honest. Um, it's, you have to have some consistency there. And that's a, I've been trying to sort of continue this argument in my column into this discussion, you know, and make people aware of, of these this, this disparity so they can come to a conclusion. I mean, because, you know, you, you talk to these operators and I mean, everybody, this, and the, the first thing that when you really get into this, it's really important to be safe and to promote the safety part of it. So you don't want to step out and, and your show's opening. The first thing you do is bitch about the distance. You know, the first thing you do is make that happen and then say, OK, let's see if we can be a little bit more uh, intelligent about our directives and, and help us be really be back to work and keep everybody safe in the same way. That's what my point is. No, I I agree completely. I think it's uh yeah, nobody wants to deal with a lawsuit. Nobody wants to have somebody you know making a making a stink and and putting a a smear mark on Las Vegas in terms of non safety issues. So yeah, yeah, I can certainly see where they're going to be. All right, look, twenty five feet. Let's just see how this goes, and then hopefully rein it in sooner rather than later. So exactly. Well, man, you are the best. I cannot thank you enough for your time. I know you are just working like an ugly stripper right now, running around, getting everything. <laughs> That's right. And uh, your column is always in the uh, review journal. I recommend everybody to uh, check out the links, follow you on social media, follow you on Instagram, especially because like I said, your pictures of all the shows, uh, you are attending everything on, I, I don't know how you've, I don't know what kind of clock you work on, but you, um, you do a brilliant job, my friend. And I can't thank you enough for your time. I, uh, it's always a pleasure to see you, Derek, spend time with you and be with you. And I can't wait to see you do your thing live uh, from 25 feet, if that's what it takes. <laughs> <laughs> Bring I'm your perfect. watermelon. Bring I'm, the watermelon. <laughs> I'm, I'm way more entertaining 25 feet away and in a sparsely filled room. <laughs> Wait, watermelon seeds. I'll bring a baggie of dried watermelon seeds to have a spitting contest. See, put that to the test, all right? <laughs> Perfect. That's all I need. John, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it, my friend. All right, DR. You're the best. Thanks. Talk to you soon, man. Thank you. Yeah.